Hey guys, Finn Silver here, back with another video. Oh, it's been a long time since I've posted a video with my voice, so, um, yeah, in the word of one of my old friends, puberty hit me like a truck. My voice is way deeper now. Anyways, I'm here to talk about something that most of you have already seen around the channel, Ninjago. To catch you all up, Ninjago ended last year and everybody absolutely hated the ending. Personally, I just hated one line and the song they chose to end it all, but I guess I can discuss that another day in another video. Today, I'm here to discuss Ninjago Dragons Rising. A new series, which is a Netflix original, so you can imagine how fun it was for someone like me who doesn't have streaming services to watch in super high quality. <laughs> which means I didn't. Until the last three episodes because I found some links. Anyways, the first season is officially over, and so I wanted to give all my thoughts on it. Now they're fresh in my mind. So the story revolves around Aaron. Aaron's a boy who, like all of us, well, some of you guys are girls, but anyways, loves and looks up to the ninja, like all of us. And then the merge happened and screwed his life over. Until he met Sora- oh, oh, hold on. One, one at a time. Let's keep talking about Eren here. So as a character, I really enjoy him. Usually the fanboy characters are, are a bit on the annoying side, but I feel like Eren is a perfect fanboy character. He's likable, relatable, and I connected with him really quickly once I saw him on screen and in action. All good traits of a good protagonist. I wonder who's writing the show because they're really good at- What? Hold on. The writer of Ninjago Dragons Rising is the same one as the one who made Marvel's Spider-Man? Okay, I for one actually like that series, and I personally believe the actual worst Spider-Man series of all time is Ultimate Spider-Man. But again, that's a topic for another day. Back to Aaron before I do my closing. He also lost his parents during the merge, and for a split second, we see his parents during the finals, the, during the finale, in a crack during the merge quake. And that's all we see. I really hope all this with Aaron and his lost parents actually lead somewhere because I have faith in them. Like, I'm letting them cook, so they better go and cook. Don't let me down, new writers, please. So, yeah, overall, Aaron's character is fun and his dynamics with the other characters are really good. Speaking of our characters, shortly after we meet Aaron and get his story out of the way, we meet Sora. Sora is a girl who's from a totally different realm out of Ninjago. You know, we have the 16 realms, she's in one of those. And she hated her home, so she was happy for the merge to happen. She came from Imperium, a realm that runs on dragon power. A cool concept, and I'll get more into it later. Sora is pretty unique. She becomes just as likable as Eren, she, although she's completely the opposite when it comes to, like, character. Like, Eren's super interested in becoming a ninja, he's a total fanboy. She has no interest in being a ninja. She has a really negative view on things. She's like a depressed teenager. One thing she has that Aaron doesn't know as of writing this. Well, okay. We'll, we'll get into it later. Maybe. She has an element. Technology manipulation, I think. They never really specify it. You know, like we have official terms for every single element. We've got energy, fire, ice, water, etc, etc. And I feel like there's not a cemented term for her power. They keep questioning and sh they're like, what can you do? I can control technology. Okay, cool. If there is an official term, I'll look into it. But for now, technology manipulation is what I'm calling it. After we meet those two, we meet Ryu. He's a baby dragon who Eren and Sora save from the Imperium. And he spruces up Sora's power, activating it, if you will. But later on, Sora learns to independently use her power although when she gained her true potential it was very underwhelming especially compared to the epic true potential scenes we got in the past you know with first zane then jay cole kai like and lloyd too those were absolutely peak but here all that happened were her eyes glowed her hands glowed and that was it wild brain's not very good with showing power-ups to the say anyways so Ryu, um, he, uh, he's there. He doesn't really do much, to be honest. Aside from help Sora in the first half, first three quarters of the show. Our next character is a legendary and super awesome Green Ninja who hasn't actually been legendary or super awesome since season two, because that's when he was the golden ninja. And then after that, he just didn't do anything. And Kai's still my favorite. Now back to the present. Lloyd is Aaron's hero, saving him during the merge. Then later, Fate brings them together once more, and Lloyd takes Eren, Sora, and Ryu under his wing the way Sensei Wu did for him. Sorry, what? Oh, we're calling him Master Wu now. Okay, it's totally more boring and not as cool as Sensei Wu, but okay, fine, whatevs. Also, Lloyd uh, grew a small beard. 
yeah that's kind of gross but like you know we never see it again so it, it's cool i guess so in this show lord's thrown into that young kid appeal character who doesn't have his mentor and now has to teach the next generation role which unlike someone looking at you bulby again on a topic for another day he actually does a good job at it and it's fun to watch and i think that's the main thing to like the reason it's fun to watch is because Lloyd's not nerfed in any way or made to look foolish so that Aaron, Sora, and Ryu can look cool, you know. Because usually with like next generation shows, they show the new characters, the new kid appeal characters looking super awesome and doing all the cool fighting stuff and they like shove aside like our former heroes. But that doesn't happen to Lloyd, thankfully. So yeah, I like I like the main squad here. Lloyd as the mentor, Aaron, Sora, and Ryu. Yeah, they're all lit. On who else is gonna help our heroes? A lot of characters apparently. Yeah, um, and now we step into one of my problems with the series. But first, I'll introduce the chuckload of heroes this series brings back and brings in. Starting off with everyone's favorite ninja, or at least mine, Kai. Or he was supposed to be. He's been poorly written ever since 2018. And so how he is, how is he now? I say that writing on Kai works. He's shown to be really overconfident, but sometimes it works for him. I feel like I, I can still feel that classic Kai who we all came to love as kids in elementary school in there. Like it's, he's still down there deep down. Later on, he really starts cooking, cooking. And for the first time in a while, I've enjoyed how Kai is being portrayed. You know, they are cooking out here. And then, well, his sister Nia is brought in pretty early too, and she's, she's there. Her and Sora get along really well, and uh, yeah, I, I guess, I guess that's it. She didn't really do that much, to be honest. Zane's brought back halfway through the season, and he brings another problem into the series, which you know I'm not a fan of. So thank you, Zane. That was sarcasm. We'll get into the problems soon. So who are the new characters we get to meet? Oh. Uh, never mind, I don't want to meet any of you guys. Goodbye. Okay. You're face. You. You face. Okay, the new elemental master of wind. You face. You're face. Yeah. Whatever. I don't know how to pronounce her name. Anyways, uh, she's a really poor character. Immediately rubbed me the wrong way with her being for the Cloud Kingdom because I don't like the Cloud Kingdom at all. So, for a character with an element. Her design is really, really, and I mean really bad. She looks like someone, some random citizen from LEGO City. Hey, the entire reason LEGO redesigned the ninja is that they could all have their own unique silhouettes. Even though they started using hair pieces on our figures, but okay. She's not unique in any way. Like, literally, her face could be... It's like in the LEGO movie where Emmett has his simple face and it could be it's not distinguishable you know so they didn't even bother to make an interesting design for the character and she's annoying i don't like her at all i hope we never see her again you know there's someone else that i didn't really like wildfire but you know there's so much to talk about with wildfire that i'm just gonna leave it for later then we get this gecko guy and i'm like no, but then I saw him in action, and I was like, sure. I let him slide because, you know, he actually has a cool and interesting element and design, unlike yours, Fascia. So, you know, but uh, he's stuck in this random realm, so uh, I, don't, I don't really know if we're ever going to see him again. The Land of the Lost, the Land of Lost Things, I forgot what it was called. Anyways, we also crossed paths again with Nauticon the Jinn. Just kidding. We see we had Dollar Tree Nauticonda Jin, who who's actually a good character. I like the small character arc he went through, and his design. You know, it works. You know, it's still got trademark Jin in there. They don't really change much. Although, what I don't like is how they completely throw out the twist aspect of making wishes with a Jin. You know, like you get three, you gotta be careful what you wish for. Can't wish for this, can't wish for that. You know, if you watch Skybound, you know what I'm talking about. But they, like, 
like Nia's there when they meet the Jin. So I wish she was like skeptical about making wishes, but like the situation was so desperate that like it flew over her head. And there wasn't like any twist with the wish. He just made them. He was like a genie. But you know, since Dragon's Rising is its own thing, not really connected to Master Spinjitsu anymore, I guess we can let it slide. But you know, for a hardcore fan established 2014, eh. Hey, at least I'm not a 2011 one, you know, who's like hardcore about everything. I'm just semi-hardcore. I'm nostalgic. That's what it is. So anyways, who haven't I covered yet? Ah, cool. Yeah, he can do that weird rock thing. And uh, instead of joining us in the final battle, he hears Wu's voice and he's like, I should go follow him. And so he does. And we never see Cole again. Well, until season two, I think. So is he going to show up? I feel like he would. Someone who I'm w more worried about is Jay. Jay shows up for five seconds and that's it. He doesn't even interact with the ninja at all. He doesn't interact with Lloyd, Zane, Aaron, no one. He's just lost cause. Someone who's not lost cause though is that frog guy. Mr. Frohickey, I think his name was. Yeah, I like him. He was a Giga Chad. So, I think we covered all the good guys. Um, oh, Master Wu, um, I, I, I don't know about Mr. Wu, is he dead? Because we see, like, this little ghost that looks like Sensei Wu at the end, but, like, is he dead? I don't know. We'll find out in Season 2, I guess. So, now let's talk about the bad guys, who are actually pretty good bad guys. So, you know, let, let's go over them all. We've got Rapton, 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 yeah, Rapton. Um, he's voiced by the same guy who did Clay in Next Nights and Kalmar in Season 14 of Ninjago. I liked him. And then, surprisingly, he actually helped the ninja during the finale. Which I was surprised about because I thought Lord Roz, our next character, was actually going to help the ninja. Because, okay, so he got imprisoned like halfway through the series because he was a quote-unquote failure. So I, got, I had this feeling that like, oh, maybe, you know, he feels betrayed. He's going to help the ninja take down the main villain. But no, that didn't happen. We'll, we'll, we'll keep going. So anyways, yeah, Lord Rods is a pretty cool character. And um, then he got 10 times cooler once the season ended because he's going to be back. Like, he's from the wildness. Yeah, not from Chima. Suck it up, Chima fans. So he's going to go back there. And he's talking like immense power. Like we saw a lot of power in this season. So I'm like excited to see what Lord Ross is cooking up. You know, I have high expectations. I had high expectations for Ninja Dragon Rising and they were semi suppressed. Like they didn't exceed my expect did they? We'll get back to that. So our main villain is Empress Beatrix. Beatrix. So, she's an evil leader and a complete lunatic. Like, when she was doing her thing, I got I got chills. I was like, oh my gosh, she actually did that. Like, she killed her father. Like, he had this little drone thingy he was flying on. And then she sabotaged it. And he crashed. And he died. So, yeah, she killed her own father. And then imprisoned her own sister, I think. No, I know it's her sister, but I'm not sure what her exact fate was. Because we never see her down in the prison cell or anything. All they show us is that she, like, they put handcuffs on her. But that was all we saw. So, I don't know if she's dead or not, or she's imprisoned. And she did that all out of jealousy. Because her sister had powers, and she didn't. And her hatred towards the ninja was built up decently. I feel like, so we didn't really see her that much in the first half of the series. It was mostly just Rapton and Lord Roz doing all the bad guy stuff. And Emperor's Beatrice was kind of just in the back chilling. But like once the ninja messed up, like once they took the dragons, like she got pissed. And she went insane wanting to take down the ninja. So I say, I say it was done decently. Like could they have done better? Maybe? But I like what we got. And uh, now she's missing. Okay. Hmm. Oh, and there's that ma magician guy. Dur Duramu, I think his name is. I don't like him. Uh, never did. Never will. 
And the two scientists weirdos, Dr. LaRoe and uh, the red-haired girl. Uh, I don't know her name either. Oh, and the collectibles this time are balls. Yeah, dragon energy cores. And another thing, they altered the first Benjutsu Master Lore again. Stating that he created other realms too. Or was that already a thing? I don't know, it gets hard to keep track of. No wonder this is a second reboot. So let's get into some flaws before we talk about the good things. And why I'm still watching the series. And I will continue until the end of time. I want to be there when Ninjago ends. And like, all of it, finally over. I'm going to be there. I don't care if I'm 88 or something. Oh, I'm going to be there. Okay, so honorable mention of my flaws. There's five of them. This is an honorable mention. The ninja suits. So back in season one of Ninjago Masters of Ninjutsu, not Dragon's Rising, the ninja got their suits and it was like a pretty epic moment. Like, they got their new suits. It had armor. It was great. Here, Eren gets his ninja suit off screen. <sighs> like, bro is a fanboy. Getting his official first ninja suit should have been like a big achievement, a big moment for him. But it isn't. And I feel like it should have been. Because, eh, whatever. It, it's disappointing, but not the biggest problem I have. So, number five. We got the opening. Yeah, okay, so the fold's gone, and they got some random people to do the new opening. It's good, but like, you know, it's it's no weekend whip. But my main problem with it is how they how they put the song into the show. Because, like, it's really choppy and really weird. And it, it just doesn't feel right. I hope they switch it up for season two. And then number four, the pacing. You'd think getting back to 22 minutes after the catastrophic 11-minute runtime of each episode in Ninjago for Dragon's Rising to return back to 22 minutes. But it came at a cost. A large portion of the season goes to fillers and unnecessary plot lines. It's not that bad, but I feel like what they're doing was just dragging the story on. I feel like there were some things that we could have easily just skipped. Like, there was this whole, like, side plot of Zayn having an identity crisis or something. But, like, why? Zayn didn't need that. But, again, this isn't one of the worst problems on the, way, on the list. Number three, too much at once. Eren, Sora, and Ryu. All good new characters for the series. Okay, let's throw in one more. Oh, and another one. And another one. For first season, they're really trying to push out as many characters as, and stuff as they can. And it's annoying. Instead of, like, you know, fleshing out the new main three, giving them, like, as much as they can. We're trying to also give as much as we can to other random characters that we don't really get to see that much to begin with. And also, a lot of locations. Like, I'd rather slowly get a lot of stuff instead of, like, a lot of stuff at once and, like, not let all of it be fleshed out. We'll probably flesh more out of it. We'll, it'll get more fleshed out in the future. But for now, nah, I didn't like that. And number two, a bad attachment to the past. So, remember how Zane brought up a problem with the series? Yeah, Zane wants Pixel back. No, Zane, get over her. She's gone, please. Okay, so, like, I am against Pixel, but I'm gonna try and be logical here with this, because think about it. Tell me what Pixel is gonna contribute to the story of Eren, Ryu, Sora, and Lloyd. Sorry, I got a little sidetracked there. I was like, did I say all the characters? Yeah, like, what's Pixel gonna bring to the table? That we don't already have. Like Sora. She. She invents stuff. She's creative. So like. Do we need Pixel? No. We never did. She's she just stuck in Zane's head. That. I feel like that's where Pixel peaked. To be honest. As Samurai X. No. No. Uh -uh. Nia was the only good Samurai X. Anyways. I have a lot of issues with Pixel's modern characterization. So I guess there's another video for me to do in the future. I just have, like, so many future videos now. Anyways, like, what I'm trying to say here is, it's okay to throw away some things from the past. Like, we don't need everything from the past for this new series. 
Derv, kick him out. Pixel, kick him out. Clutch powers, oh my. Oh, they used a book template. This is a new series. It doesn't have to keep clinging on to what was. When it should be focusing on what it can be. You know, let them cook. They're cooking. You know, like, they don't have to keep grabbing onto the past. Okay, and now my biggest problem. I never thought I could hate a character this much. But Wildfire was my number one problem with this series. Can't even put it into words, but every single scene she's on screen, she's an eyesore, an ear sore. Sorry, voice actor, but hey, at least you're getting paid. She's weird, unappealing, and just awful. Her biggest issue was her pure existence. She's a very similar power to Kai, and she acts like she's better than him, which we all know she isn't. And usually, when characters have is always getting into trouble in their bio, it means they're a reckless but enjoyable character. You know, we got... Like, I've seen some people compare to Nosuke from Demon Slayer. But he's cool. I like him. He's funny. But Wildfire is just aggravating. I mean, it makes sense. Girl was raised by a dragon, so I guess it... Nah, not excusable at all. If Heatwave ate her instead of raising her, Heatwave would have become my number one character of all time. To end this off, I would like the Ninjago community to come together and give me the title of being Wildfire's number one hater. That's what I would have said. If Kai didn't save her from being the Ninjago's worst character. Because of Wildfire, Kai got a lot of time to shine and him mentoring an even worse mirror version of himself was actually nice. And helped both characters like develop and be more interesting. And the cliffhanger with the differences between their powers has me excited to see Kai back in action soon. Even though Wildfire is going to be there too. She doesn't piss me off as much as she did to begin with. But like... I, yeah, I think I think wildfires. I think we're good now. Okay, so after all that negativity, let's talk about some good stuff. The main cast. I've already brought this up multiple times throughout the video. So, Aaron, Sora, Ryu, and Lloyd. They're solid. I like them. I like the team. I like the dynamic everyone has. Especially the dynamic between Lloyd and Aaron. I'm glad we got like two whole episodes of just them working together for like half... T for like... During the second half of the series. I have a script here and I can't even follow it. Wow. Uh, I haven't been following it half the time. Anyways, number two. The Crossroads. Oh my god, I love the Crossroads. Okay, so earlier I was dissing the world building. But it did do some things right. Having a small location where the characters occasionally visit. Just makes the world of Dragons Rising feel a lot more grounded and likable in my opinion. Like maybe some filler was thrown in there. Because of the crossroads, you know, like Zane's identity crisis. But still, the ninja barely hung around in Ninjago City in seasons 11 to 15. Like, they were they were going all over the place because they couldn't really think of anything to do in Ninjago. And that was a problem. But here, you know, this is a fresh start. We get to just explore, have fun, even if it's a bit messy. I hope that made sense. And my number one praise for the show it's a reboot so i kind of already started on this on number two but okay so i won't lie i was absolutely sick and tired of modern ninjago F from the first promo we got for season 11 where the animation looked super crappy well that was because it was unfinished but look hear me out i was just like <sighs> I was not liking what they were doing. They were not cooking at all. The series was boring. The animation was really bad at first. Even when unfinished. Like I remember Tommy showing us this like image of Sensei Wu looking really cool. But that was just like a single frame and the rest of it still looked like garbage. And speaking of garbage, they made the ninja look like jokes every single chance they could. Like these guys weren't heroes. They were just people. And like their powers got taken away like half the time. And I was just like, I was tired of it. And besides, it didn't even lead up to anything good. Everyone hated the finale, like I said, in the start of the video. It was like, barely above average. But then, a miracle came. And then Jago was announced to get it rebooted. And a new cast of characters was to take the lead. And I was optimistic to see what this new series would have to offer. And thankfully, it delivered. Okay, well it has its ups and downs. But overall, it's pretty solid. Am I trying to show it all... 
am I trying to show it to all my friends? No, because Dr. Stone exists, and if My Hercadamia wasn't a thing, Dr. Stone would literally be my favorite anime ever. But anyways, to sum it all up, Ninjago Dragons Rising does a fairly good job at taking the foundations of Ninjago and making something new and enjoyable out of it. It's a fresh start and I'm looking forward to the future. And well, that's all I got to say. Please share this video as I'd like for a lot of members of the Ninjago community to view my views and my thoughts about Ninjago Dragons Rising. And let me know what you guys think about Dragons Rising. And with all that said, have a super fantastic day guys.